Hello, Jesse. How are you? I hope you're enjoying it in Honduras. I really appreciated your reflection video that you made. It was really great to hear about all the ways you've grown this year and um, how you have flourished despite all the changes that happened in your life. And I'm really excited to hear how you will continue to grow even more once you return from Honduras. So recently, I've just been very thoughtful. I don't really know why. It might be because I've graduated and like to think retrospectively, but I don't know. It could just be my time in the life to be thoughtful. But there's something that I really wanted to write about and to talk about, so I am making a video about that. I decided I would take the chance and share some of my story and and where I'm at now. I want to evaluate my depression now that it's been a year since I've been diagnosed. Lately I've been encouraged by my community and through sermons to be more authentic and more vulnerable in order to create truer community and truer relationship that is godlike and um, that blesses others. So this is me trying to act in obedience out of that by sharing some of my story. I want to start off by saying that we live in a sinful world and because of that not only do people behave out of walk with God but there's sin in our creation, there's sin in illnesses in our bodies, and there's sin in the systems that our world uses to create sense. And because of that, there's things like mental illness, and there's things like abuse and addiction. I just wanted to make sure that was acknowledged before I started talking about my struggle with depression. So, like I said, I graduated, and because of that, I'm constantly thinking about school, friends, relationships, and my family. But time and time again, my mind always comes back to one thing, and that is the memory of my encounter with depression. So I was diagnosed with depression 13 months ago, and unbeknownst to me and probably to most of my family and friends, I had been living with it for five years. When I look back at my journal entries and my behavior, I can recognize it now for what it is. Upon diagnosis, my depression morphed from just being a part of me, a part of my personality, my mood swings. It morphed from that into something that totally consumed my whole being. It's, it's funny how once something has a name, it has power. It has an identity and it comes alive. Even when my depression had a name and it started to gain power, I still didn't want to let it have power. I still tried to have control over it by giving it a different name. I don't call it depression, at least when I'm talking about it or thinking about it to myself. You see, I refer to it as my skeleton. I call it my skeleton because it lives in the back of my mind in the closet and I don't want anyone to know about it and I want it to stay hidden. But there are times when I can't control it and it comes out and when it does it just it takes over me and I'm overwhelmed and there are times when it just comes and it comes like tidal wave after tidal wave smothering me in emotion that I can't get out of I can't control my skeleton whispers lies in my ear it plays tricks on my mind and it takes control over my body at the time of my diagnosis my behavior was marked by extremes over the course of the day, I could be friendly, joyful, happy around my friends. And at the end of the day, I am crushed and broken and just surrounded in self-loathing and despair, hating myself, hating where I'm at, hating who I'm with, and finding no value whatsoever in my life. I was stuck in my hardened heart and I could not see past the storm that was in my face. Five words. Five words is all it takes. I wish I was dead. Those are the words that landed me on the doctor's examination table. Those are the words I barely was able to say as I laid on the floor 
of my living room soaked in my own tears. Those are the words that raced through my mind as I considered death over life. And those are the words that my skeleton told me over and over and over how I was better off not in this life. One day I will share more details of that lowest point. And one day I will share all the details of my recovery, but not today. I hope it's enough to say that it was my collision with God in the months following my emotional and mental breakdown that tipped the scales back to favor life over death. At that time in my life, I was taking medication. I was away from the circumstances that prisoned me. And most of all, I was surrounded by loving people who poured truth into my life, revealed the lies that I was holding on to about who I am and what I'm for. Even though all of this happened a year ago, I still can't help but think of it almost every day. And that brings me to today because I still have depression. I'm not a doctor by any sorts, but I don't think you just get diagnosed and you're worse of your worst and then you recover and then it's better forever. You never have to worry about it again. You don't have it anymore. It doesn't just go away. My skeleton still comes out to play. In fact, it was just several months ago when I started falling into the traps again. I started spiraling down into the pit where I hated myself and I hated everything around me. And the moment I realized that it was my depression acting up again, terror. I was so panicked. I wanted nothing more than to not experience my breakdown again. And I thank God for him and for the person at the time who poured God's truth over me and let the light shine in the darkness until I was able to believe those truths again. So again, it's been a year and I'm not taking medication anymore. I am no longer hiding from the things that give me anxiety, but what's most important is that I no longer am afraid of the skeleton. It was just, what, a month, two months ago when I came across the realization that completely blew my mind. I was at the Mercy Me concert with my family and they sang one of their new songs called Ghost. I was stunned, frankly, because you see, while I live with a skeleton inside me, I also live with a ghost, a holy ghost. I have a ghost in me with the power of the God of the universe, with the strength and the might and the glory of the Lord of all things. A ghost who banishes the darkness, who pours comfort and light into my soul, and who is greater than every illness that mankind has ever known and ever will know. I have a ghost inside me who is always going to win, who will always rise in victory over the skeleton inside of me. My battle with depression has been a life-changing journey. I will never be the same. But the best thing in all of that is that it doesn't define me. Only one thing defines me, and that is that I and you and anyone who watches this video ever, which is going to be like no one, but still, we are all beloved children of God, and that is the only thing that gives us worth and the only thing that defines us. And that is so incredible and so beautiful, and there will never be anything greater than that. Because God loved us first, he loved us now, he will love us in the future, no matter what we've done or will do. He loves us more than we could ever love him. He will pursue us more than we can ever pursue him. And he is forever more dedicated to us than we will be dedicated to him, no matter what we do or what we don't do. And that is so beautiful. And I cling to that every time, every time I start to lose control until the truth goes from my head into my heart and I believe it. It's never easy and it will never be easy. Thanks for letting me share my heart with you. Be safe in Honduras. I want to know everything about it.